What are the best songs to put on your set list to entertain and engage your audience and leave them mind blown begging for more? In this video, I'm gonna give you a proven seven step system for coming up with songs to put on your set list to make it as effective as possible. Hey, and welcome to Music Space. Here we help working musicians monetize their craft. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated when new videos are uploaded. Now, right before we get into this video, if you're a band artist or musician looking to make some serious passive income and grow a huge fan base, I'm advising all bands and artists and musicians like this to start a YouTube channel today. And that's because right now, YouTube continues to be the biggest growth opportunity for bands, artists, and musicians to gain a huge following and make lots of money. And because of this, I've created the YouTube Quick Start course. This course is specifically designed to get you up and running and making money and growing a huge fan base on YouTube really quickly and easily. And the best part is it's completely free and you can get instant access to it at the link in the description of this video. So having the right songs on your set list is crucially important. It can mean the difference between your band tanking and you know people thinking you suck to you getting a bunch of future gigs. And one of the things that not a lot of us musicians think about is that the average audience member that's out there listening to us play, they aren't musicians and they don't think like us. So they're not sitting judging us like, oh, he didn't play that chord right, this run right, or this technical thing correctly. They're judging you based off simple things like the songs on your set list. But it's also important because you want your set list to reflect who you are as a band or as an artist or musician. And so a well put together set list can leave audiences really entertained and engaged and wanting more. And this is the seven step system that's gonna help you do just that. So the first step is really crucial and that is just to first pick songs that you can perform well and that you are able and capable of performing. Now there's a little bit of subjectivity in that. So, you know, what you're capable and able to do and how it comes out is a little bit subjective, but basically you want to be able to perform songs as close to the original song as possible. And what I mean by that is not like you have to be an exact replica of what the actual song is you're covering, but you want to have it sound like it's a representation of that song. You don't want to be playing some popular song on the radio and then people looking at you like, what is this they're playing? I don't even recognize this. And then the vocalist or something comes in and they, they recognize the lyrics and it's like, oh, that's what that's supposed to be? And this step sets the foundation for your set list because if you're not able or capable of performing certain songs and they're not gonna go over well, you probably shouldn't do them. And you can just kind of use process of elimination like this is something we shouldn't do because we can't do it well or we don't know how to do it at all now the next step in this system flows from what i just said about popular songs and that is you want to start with the hit songs this is something that is really important because the hit songs like the really popular songs that are the hits are going to be the ones that audiences most identify with these are gonna be the songs that resonate with your audience the most and that are more likely to entertain them and keep them engaged. So what you wanna do is just search for like the top 10 or 20 songs in whatever music genre you play or that you specialize in and then pick the ones that you can identify with most as per step one, you know, pick the ones that you can play and you are capable of performing and can perform well and you know include those in your set list you start with those songs now from there what you want to do and this is the next step is you want to add variety in terms of genre of music and tempo and so what i mean here is you may be a rock band that specializes in rock music or whatever the genre is you want to also add some variety in terms of like some good r b and pop music or jazz music that will resonate with a larger audience because it's cool that you specialize in rock and you could do that well but if you're playing like a four hour a three or four hour gig and you're playing rock music like hard rock music or something the entire night people are probably going to get pretty bored pretty quickly so what you want to be doing is while you're doing all of that rock music and you know you're flowing that way throw a curveball in there every now and then and do like a, a popular rap song or a popular R&B and jazz song or whatever. Now it's also important to do this in terms of your song tempos. You wanna add some variety there too. 
do some up-tempo songs, do a few of those, and then throw like a medium tempo song in there, and then every now and then do a slow song or a ballad or something like that. Putting songs on your set list in terms of variety, again, is what is going to resonate mostly with your audience. It's gonna keep them loving you. Okay, so the next step in this process is something that I kind of alluded to in one of the other steps, and that is you wanna stay far away from those abstract songs. And I really wanna hone in on this because this is super important because again, you have to know that we musicians and artists and bands think a little bit differently from audiences, from the average person that's sitting in the audience listening to us play. So that song on the album that we think is like the greatest song ever, that has all of these technical aspects to it and the guitar riffs and the drums and the keyboards and all of this stuff is going on and it moves us because we're musicians, the average person is not gonna care about that. This is one of these areas where a lot of bands and musicians kind of lose their way and they start to be seen as like sucky bands and musicians and stuff because they start including these like whack songs at least from the audience's perspective are whack songs you know you're doing the popular stuff you're doing the popular pop songs the 24k magic by bruno mars and all of this kind of stuff and then you throw some abstract song in there you know two or three of those you're gonna lose your audience now, the next step is a really good one, and I think it's probably my favorite step in this process, and that is really to just think like a DJ. And what I mean by this is that when a DJ is, you know, DJing for a gig or a party or whatever, they have a particular way in which they engage the dance floor and they keep people dancing and they keep people moving. Granted, it is a little bit easier for DJs because a lot of times they're on a console and they just have to push some buttons and play some songs and again that doesn't take anything away from them i'm just saying it's a little easier in terms of that than what we bands and artists and musicians do but still that process is something that we can glean from specifically in terms of the energy that you're driving the audience with with your music and this will help you place the songs in particular orders when you're ready to perform them because you can take the high energy stuff you can place it in a category you can take the you know medium energy level stuff or the low energy level stuff you know and figure out how to flow from one song to the next like a dj does you know do you want stops and long breaks between your music or do you want the songs to flow from one another and go right into the next song like a dj does usually there's no break in dj music and that leads into the next step, which is to add the structure and the transitions to your set list. So once you've gone through this process and you've got the popular songs, you've got the songs that you can perform well and you have some variety to them in terms of genre and tempo, you want to structure that list so that it flows extremely smoothly. So this is where you take the list of the songs that you have on your set list and you take song one and you say, what's the best song to go after this? You can do that in terms of key, in terms of tempo, in terms of like the style of it and all of that kind of stuff. And then between those songs, you can think about, okay, so how am I gonna get from this song to the next song? What's the transition gonna be? So you can go in and do stuff like add talking points. Like if you're gonna stop, if you're gonna do a cold stop, you have like your singer, you know, address the audience, say something to the audience while the band is prepping or counting off the next song. Or you do something that's really popular with bands and something that's really easy. You just kind of do like a drum break. So from song one, you stop that song, but the drums keep going. And if the tempo is the same to the next song, the drums keep going and you just kind of count that off. And then while the drums are still going, the singer or whomever can still be addressing the audience, say, hey, come on, everybody, get on the dance floor. And then we're gonna count this out, one, two, three, four, and then we go into the next song. You see how that works? This is one of these things that, again, is going to keep your performance really engaging. And so the next step in this process is a really simple one, and that is just to be flexible. And what I mean here is that regardless of all of the preparation that we've done to put our set list and stuff together, there are things that happen on gigs that we may have to adapt to. And the most common things in that category are things like you may have to play more songs than you plan to, or you may have to play less songs. So you put together this seamless set list that's gonna flow really smoothly, but the event you're playing for doesn't start on time, so you have less time to perform. Now you have to be flexible and adjust that set list to still make it flow seamlessly from 
you know, one song to another and all of that. And of course, on the other side, if you time that gig wrong and you know, you're running out of songs and stuff really quickly, you may have to do some adjustments. And so what you're doing in this step is really just planning for those types of things to happen. And of course, you're not gonna be able to plan for every contingency that happens, but you wanna be prepared at least for the most common things like the ones I mentioned. And something else that's really important to consider when it comes to gigging is money and how you divide up money and things like that. And I've done a few videos about that and you can go here and check those videos out right now.